The third module of this lecture talks about a form of quantitative prior knowledge um, that is um, that complements what we just discussed previously, and it is about um, uh, things such as location-based priors. So if you manage to locate an independent component source, for example using dipole fitting, so then you have the 3D position and an orientation, or using uh, distributed source localization as what NFT, for example, offers or a bunch of other toolboxes, uh, well then each parameter is endowed with a location. Uh, like here, uh, so for example, this model has a bunch of parameters like the weights and spectrum, such as 0.7 here, say, and this number has an assigned location, namely here in the brain. And so that is practical if you know something in advance about what parts of the brain are relevant, of course, uh, too. So you might know um, something about the anatomy of the brain, and you might know, say, oh, well, we are thinking that our sources should come from the hippocampus. Relevant information should be in the hippocampus. And um, there's atlases which say which locations well, are, or whatever, are part of the hippocampus. And um, so if you have a parameter uh, slot, so to speak, and you have the location, you can immediately say a priori, you know, this is irrelevant. Uh, I waited, I might even remove it, or I multiply it by a very small number, or I penalize it with a very high number. And so uh, using these atlases, uh, such as Telerac and Loni and so on, in combination with this whole source localization pathway, we can easily prune down our features and our possible um, BCI models and constraint solution space to anatomical locations. And in, actually in the toolbox there is something for that, although it is not yet perfect. It's called volume selection. It's basically a filter stage where which, which you turn on and then you can select anatomical areas to which you want to constrain your model, basically. You can say, I want to restrict it to medial frontal gyrus or something like that. And then it'll, it'll just you know, remove all the other components. It requires that also the dipole fitting stage is enabled and the ICA stage. The other um, source of, of empirical prior knowledge is um, things about um, not just the names of these anatomical regions, but something about the functional um, relevance of these regions. So, uh, and you can get this in a data-driven manner in theory. So, uh, for example, if you manage to find a functional brain atlas, where you say, okay, um, you search for where is um, visual information being processed in the brain, it'll give you some kind of a map that highlights some things. And the map is going to be probabilistic because it's going to be different for different people. So that's a probabilistic location-based prior, functional prior. And you can directly add that assumption and the prior into your model, either with penalties or if you use an alternative Bayesian formulation, which we haven't really covered, uh, as, a, as a prior. So um, that's something that you can do. And you can, if you don't find a functional atlas that suits you, but you have multiple subjects, you can try to co-register the data of all your other subjects into an ad, you know into a three D representation like that, and average the functional relevance assigned by your model to all these places, and um, and then utilize this information for a new subject to constrain the model that you learn for that new subject, and that's something that is um, has only recently been proposed a few years ago and so on, and we're trying to embark on that to some extent. So fundamentally, if you have multiple people, say, uh, or multiple recordings, if you have the ability to localize all that in 3D and perhaps even with some kind of a distribution that says what your localization error is maybe, uh, you can definitely aggregate all that across many people and use it as priors for new people or learn all that jointly in some kind of a multitask learning um, framework. And so that's um, the main idea behind source resolved feature extraction and priors and so on and so on. So you can imagine that um, with the idea of having all this quantitative and empirical knowledge and the structural priors and the benefit of um, not having to deal with spatial filters because ICA already solved it for you, that is a rather powerful framework where you can try lots of things and can look at data that, that people haven't really dealt with before for BCI purposes. I should say one last thing here, and this is um, w while it's true that independent component analysis only gives you 
um, doesn't necessarily find what you were looking for. There's recent extensions to that which learn over complete representations, so more components than you had sensors, basically. And one of these m algorithms is, is um, reconstruction ICA or RECA. That is uh, a method that, that can learn any number of components. Basically, it's pretty much a dictionary learning algorithm, or you can also say sparse coding algorithm. And with that, the, the probability that it pulls up a source that you were actually looking for is much higher than if you have only a number of generous components. So it becomes much, much more attractive to use, use these kinds of models for, um, you know, to, to get you the components which are already spatially filtered and so on. And in fact, this whole framework is very, very closely related to the idea of using deep networks. So neural networks uh, where you have, say, you know, you extract many, f you know, kind of low level features in the first layer of the network and then you go on and extract higher level features. And the representations are usually very over complete. So many more neurons, say, than, than you had channels or pixels or something like that. And that is, I mean, it's being done with great success. Uh, we, people haven't really used it much on EEG, but it's absolutely applicable. In fact, the algorithms are actually the same. So the RECA algorithm, Reconstruction ICA, is exactly the algorithm you know, that Google used on their cluster to find cat faces in YouTube videos or so. So it is, um, it's, um, we're very close to being able to, to really being not very restricted in EEG analysis if you have the computation time to run all that.